Hello everyone, my name is Peter Marciano and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about PIDs and how to tune them. We're going to be using the Kraken robot here, which is uh, distributed with your simulation installation. And I'm going to be writing robot code from scratch. I'll include a link to this code in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. But it's pretty simple. Okay, so I've gone ahead and run this code, making sure my ports are right and my PID controller is added to live window. I have also run my simulation driver station and the simulation smart dashboard. So I now have a view that looks something like this. So go ahead and arrange your smart dashboard how you like and then enable the elevator subsystem. We do indeed want displacement because we're trying to control its position. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a set point. So I can test first to make sure it works by setting speed to my motor if I disable this. You can see it moves up or it moves down. Now notice if I zero it, it falls slowly. So this is just because of the properties I've set for this joint uh, in gazebo. If you're trying to make this simulate a real robot, in reality it probably wouldn't fall so you can adjust the parameters but we'll keep this in here just to make things interesting so notice here the output of the encoder as we set the speed of the motor we can see it ranges from 0 to 95 I believe this is in inches so if we go ahead and enable our controller and set a set point of somewhere in the middle say 50 we can then start by setting P of 1. Now our goal here is to determine order of magnitude. So as you can see, this is much too strong. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease it tenfold. And now set the set point to 0. And then set the set point to 50. And we'll see what happens. Now, it turns out that this is actually incredibly good already. But for the sake of it, let's say I had some constraint which required me to not move that quickly. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's set set point back to zero and go down to point oh one. So now you can see the problem we have. The set point is fifty, but we've only reached thirty eight. Now, of course, I can increase this, and we'll go closer. But in order to increase it enough to get to our set point, which seems to be about that point one I had earlier, let's try that point one five. In order to reach the set point, I'm now moving more quickly than I've specified. So here we have to do some actual tuning. Let's bring this back down to 0 0.05 and see if that matches our speed requirement. Nope, I'm going to make it 0 0.2. Of course, these requirements are arbitrary, but realistic. You might want to not move quickly because you're picking up a tote and you don't want it to fall off, for instance. Alright, so now we've matched our speed requirement. So we have to fix our PID so we actually reach the set point. Now in this case, we're dealing with a PID with some bias. So there's bias downwards. In this case, we can use the iTermer by PID controller. The iTermer is responsible for handling accumulated error. So since this error is accumulated over time, the integral term, which is what I stands for, will help us take care of that. Again, we'll start by determining order of magnitude, but in this case I'm going to start at point 1 because the I term is typically much, much, much smaller than your P or your D term. So let's set I, let it go to zero, and enable. So you can see we've obviously gone much too far with I, so we're going to decrease it by an order of magnitude and try again. Okay, so we're doing better, and notice we're actually reaching our set point, but that's still much too far too much overshoot. So down we go by another order of magnitude. Alright, so now you can see this overshoot in the first direction, but not the second. Let's go a little bit farther and see what happens. 
Okay, so as you might expect, we've gone too far. The controller is now struggling to reach its set point. Let's bring that up just a little bit. So I've now doubled it to 0. 0.0002. Okay, now again we have a little bit of overshoot. So we're going to try 0. 0.00015. We're no longer reaching our set point, so it looks like 2 was the closest we're going to get. Now, one thing to remember about the integral term is that it's time-based. So if I have a longer set point, such as 90, which is or 80, which is right near the top, we're going to have more accumulation of error, which means this I term is going to have a bigger impact. Keep that in mind when you're tuning your PID. Alright, so here I've got a different robot, so we can practice tuning a different PID system. Uh, this is the eKips robot, and I'm going to be using the eKips code, which is also available on my GitHub, link in the description. Um, it's very similar to the last one in terms of code, in fact it's almost ex exactly the same. We've just got a PID subsystem, and we're going to be using Live Window to do our tuning. So let's jump right in. I've got Smart Dashboard and my driver station all set up and running. Of course, you can always go ahead and verify that the arm moves when you set the motor speeds. Um, but this time, notice how I have to set a negative motor speed to get the arm to move up. This is a little bit silly because, of course, why don't I just go fix it in the model file? But I'm leaving it in here because I know it often happens on robots. Um, so we're going to learn how you take that into account. OK, so go ahead and enable your PID and give it a set point. Um, in this case, we're going to start with 0.5, or let's just start with 0. 0 should be straight, flat forward. And this should be the left wrist, so if I change my view, we can tell the angle is down. In fact, it's down by 0.4, I believe. So if we go ahead and set P to 1, you can see the motor moving up a bit. But it's not reaching flat, and it's certainly not stabilizing. Now, I can increase P so that we reach our set point. Or I can increase until we overshoot it. But notice how we're really never reaching a flat zero. You know, The weight of the arm here is going to pull it down as soon as we reach the, the set point. So when your error is zero and your motor output is zero, the arm's just going to fall back down. So there's two ways we can tackle this. First is by giving an enormous P. So what that means is that even a tiny error is going to be enough to lift the arm back to position. And then we're going to counteract this, this oscillation by adding a D term. So let's say P is 10. Let's set D of 1 and see what happens. OK, not much happened. What about D of 10? OK, now we're getting somewhere. So it's now settled, and it's roughly at its set point. Let's go ahead and change the set point and see how the system reacts. I'm going to set it to 1. Remember, this is in radians. Oh, <laughs> 1's beyond the limit. Let's go negative 1. OK. So again, kind of a lot of oscillation, but not too bad. Let's try setting it straight up. That's pi over 2. OK. Now, unfortunately, our arm here is in the way, so we can't do any set points past that, or our, our flipper. Um, but that's not bad. Let's set it back down to 0 and see what happens. So we've got a decent speed and a bit of oscillation, but nothing insane. 